So we're super, super, super happy to have E, even though it's a little bit of a traitor, he abandoned us a couple of years ago, but now we are happy that he's back in Geneva with us. So he was, uh, was a professor at the Institute. You joined in 2012, right? Time flyer. <laughs> 2013. 2013. And uh, so it was, uh, it's really great to have him back. So uh, he is now a professor of finance at Fudan. He's also an uh, associate dean. And uh, I think it's the first time you travel outside China in a long time, right? So yes. it's great that you came here for your first trip. OK, so and, uh, you're talking about monetary policy in China. So thank you very much for the invitation. So for me, it's very glad to come back. And also, after eight times quarantine last year in Shanghai, <laughs> <laughs> and from two days to two months, is the middle center of French concessions. I start to think, what should I present? After one, one year, whether my mind has to be deflated or inflated. <laughs> and that's why today I'm going to present my ongoing project, which is also very hard for me to choose a project, because at uh, our international economic departments, you guys usually have two streams. One stream called international economics, another stream called development economics. Today, I'm going to talk, try do my best to put two projects together, try to present one paper, try to study first part, more finance, look at uh, how monetary policy transmission through new channel, a channel called bond financing. Okay, usually in finance literature, we we'll also look at deposit, ch deposit channels, we we'll look at bank lending, usually look at balance sheet, you know, I could discuss a paper about all the debate, a recent financial fragile, you know, Fragilities, mainly coming from so-called deposit fundings. Okay, so today I'm talking about first part, which I already, you know, have a draft. Also, I think I, you know, I want to, you know, very, very, very clear. Uh, very, I will try to use a very most of thirty percent of my time, seventy uh, percent of my time to present first part. So, bond financing channel money policy in China, and try to study the evidence from the bank lending. Second part, which which is also going to meet some of. Uh, demand for now development economies. The issue is the relationship between finance, banking, and income inequality. Well, people always say finance for society. What's the rule of finance? What's, whether the bank lending is going to create it, or money policy is going to increase or decrease income inequality. Okay, this is a so-called real effect for money policy, which is not, this paper is not Chinese paper say. More importantly, we want to put all this kind of data idea together to understand the rule of bank landings and uh, try to use new data to test that. Okay, let me start it. First question, okay, uh, there's a joint work with uh, Hao used to be PB, school, uh, PBC School of Finance in Tsinghua, now as South South Tech, also one of our former PhD students, uh, Bing Lu, now as uh, Beijing Normal University. So, since I only have a one hour and 30 minutes, so I'm going to give a very quick roadmap what I'm going to talk today. Number one, I'm going to point out two very important research questions, frontier questions, to all of you. I'm looking forward to your, your, your feedback. Second part, I'm going to look at the data, the new data. We're going to try to answer those questions, okay? And the research design. And then we're going to represent the result in terms of the first part, financing effect. Second part, we, we look at the real effect, okay? For your, for your comments. So financing effect, we're going to look at money policy through bond financing channels. And what's transmissions, which I look at, look, mainly look at what? Look at bank lending to loan rate, loan volumes, loan maturities. Okay, this classical question we talk about money to policy transmissions. Second part, I'm going to talk about the real effect. I look at money to policy, bank lending, so the relationship between money to policy, bank lending, and income inequalities. Income inequality not only look at the, between firms, between cities, also within firms. Okay, so new data, new research frontier. We look at uh, employee employer matching data to look at this kind of new angle in terms of uh, measurement in current quality. Okay, let me start it. Number one, in this paper, the main, top, uh, main target we want to explore so called redistribution channel of money policy. And we try to, first part, we we'll try to use uh, so called bond financing channels and we we'll look at the funding cost impact back lending decisions. Okay, so why is it important? Because, as we just mentioned, recent GIF 
JFE QG paper through the also important the leading scholar in banking. So just look, if you look at the bank balance sheet, the asset liability, if you look at the liability side, get rid, let's forget, you know, also equity first. Look at the other part, bank loans, oh, sorry, deposit, light was time deposit, and the second part, so-called hosted fundings. Recent all major study try to look at the liability, even mainly from deposit. The claim, uh, the claim, I, I don't want to use the previous it's published top journal compared to current stature, we will have a lot of discussions. The claim, if we look at li bank liability side, mainly coming from deposit, which is a very <coughs> stable funding source. Okay? That's why every bank needs only compete for what? Compete for deposit. Then we have a recent debate up about the so, you know, Silicon Valley Bank, other bank, how distribution of our deposit, how competition by regional. But anyway, this is not, it's not a topic, but as motivations, when we write this paper, most of researchers look, the deposit funding matters. Okay? Because the second part of research, based on two famous papers, they try to look at, if we look at library site, they, if we really rely on wholesale fundings, good time, bond costs are low for banks, but bad time, more volatilities. So we call buy, bright and dark side of bank wholesale fundings. I think Citric also used a similar reference, I follow from him, about, about the uh, Rico Huang and the left uh, 2011 Journal of Financial Intermediate Papers. So people always argue, look, wholesale funding is bad, market funding is bad because too volatile. Then today, we also want to highlight one recent paper uh, trying to use European data. So not look, look at the bank, they look at firms. If you look at firms, we know in finance we're picking orders. Firm can borrow from equity market, firm can borrow from the in, internal capital market, firm can borrow from the bank, firm can borrow also from the bond market. Okay, bond is a debt instrument. So in that paper, they, they found out, compared with the bank lending channels, Bond financing does not reduce money policy transmission in eurozones. They use a firm level data, which is borrower data. Okay. In in my paper in today's presentation, I focus on lender. Okay. From borrower's data, the firm with more bonds in the balance sheet, in, in, in the balance sheet, liability. The firm with bond are more affected by surprise money policy tighten related to another firms. So so far, I didn't mention one key. Different between monetary policy per se and a monetary policy shock. Surprise, the shocks. And in today's my papers, today's presentation also in my papers, we differentiate. We are going to use different kind of monetary policy measure in China, both quantity and the, and the price, as well as monetary policy shocks, which is a common you know, practice in our literature, try to understand monetary policy shock rather than money policy per se, okay? That's the first line motivation. And uh, for this paper, we also want to highlight or connect to recent debate and uh, one of our Google's uh, famous research about uh, ownership of banking, state ownership of banks. So uh, <coughs> recently, beside our GF paper, so a few papers also try to study the policy banks, state only the banks. Mainly those banks was uh, lending decisions you know, they think about, oh, state only the banks. They might relate to state uh, policy, fiscal policy, or any policy. So what's the transmissions for monetary policy, okay? So recently two papers, one at the GF, one at the GFE, try to use the Chinese data to look at the Chinese subnation, like a government bond, local government bond, okay? Look at how policy bank lending decision, what happened before, whether they lose policy bank, or more government, more state only the banks, the lending, more reliable market driven, market disciplines, or government policy. So that is the paper. We, this is the third literature we try to connect our data uh, with and try to study the money policy transmission through one policy banks in China. That's my sample here. That's how my data coming from. Every population level data, long level data. Okay? Try to answer this question because these policy banks only rely on. That's nice in, in terms of research design. This bank, in my, so, so, 
the material I'm going to use, I use all population loan level data from one policy bank. That banks mainly rely on wholesale funding, bond financing. They cannot take deposit. Okay, which is nice for me to clean up all the debate, either your deposit channel or bond finance channel. For the bank, I'm, the data I'm using only rely on bond financing, rather than deposit. That's why it allow me to test bond financing channels. Okay, this first part I think mainly I spend 70 percent of my time try to try to try to present the results and try to explain the money to policy transmission through bond financing channels. Second part, also, I think a lot of research try to study income quality from finance literature, GF, GF, VFS. They always look at what's rule for finance. Don't blame us. Sorry, don't blame the, all the finance literature uh, uh, profess, uh, professions. Finance might be good for society, as Singalis wrote for AFA president address. And this paper, on this literature, they try to study the policy, what happened between money policy shock and income quality. And in U.S. data, they try to study this kind of a, not only average results, the mainly focus on heterogeneities. The recent AER QG paper try to study when money policy change, okay, they have an impact to heterogeneity for rich people or the poor people, okay. Kind of money policy, if you have a lot of leverage, lot of household debt, okay, what happened to your debt levels because of financial cost increasing? Consumption decisions and income income levels and income growth and all the features they only using mortgage data to study for that. So this one's a uh, GPE, this one's a YAP paper, if I remember correctly. So a lot of debate try to study this kind of a heterogeneity effect of a modern policy. Okay, so called reduced reading channels. Who's winner? Who's the loser? No, it's not equal. Okay, across income group, across different wealth group. The second part of today's presentation, I'm going to study. Since uh, all this kind of research, we don't have any consensus. Okay, some part, some country they found positive ones, some negative one. Okay, because we're facing challenge. One major challenge for this kind of empirical investigation requires detailed wage and other income information between and within firms. Okay, and now in this paper. I highlight, huh? We use unique employee, employer <coughs> matching data. Okay? We can easily try to, we can easily explore this kind of redistribution effect of our money policy. Okay? I not only know on average wage, I also know the wage within firms. Okay, and then money policy shocks, back and landing different across different sectors, diff, different regions. What's the real effect? The by the way today, even even Patricia is very nice to put my presentation title as a Chinese money policy, and very broad. But I want to narrow down into academic research. Of course, when I present, I'm going to explain to you what's detailed institutional background of Chinese money policy. But importantly, as a still a serious researcher, I try to put my put on my time and my effort to think about the frontier academic research question. Number one, we want to understand. Money policy transmissions through which channels? Deposit or bond finances from bank perspective. Secondly, what's the real effect? Okay, does finance can increase or decrease income quality? Okay, so that's why second part I'm going to explain the real effect. Okay. Any questions so far? No questions. I mean, I, I have a quick question. Yeah. I was when you were talking about policy banks, so. Yeah. Uh, could you maybe give an example, just so I can kind of like visualize in my mind, because I didn't really so in my, understand in this what this bank I'm using. So lending, I don't know. Today I only fo focus on this bank's so domestic balance sheet. If you look at his international exposures, his lending to Africa is uh, twice bigger, uh, twice times than the World Bank group together. Maybe you should explain that in China there are different type of banks. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to explain the details. Okay, you know. In China, we have a big four banks, National Wise Bank, mm -hmm. okay, listed in Hong Kong or New York, mm -hmm. or listed company. But big shareholder is a state, okay. But it's national wide banks. They can use they take deposit from every regions, but they can use internal capital market to relocate all the credit. Mm -hmm. Big four. Then have local joint banks, shareholder banks like a region bank, regional banks. 
also have a rural banks, but rural banks are commercial banks, okay? uh, mainly lending business. Okay? They never do IPOs, they, they don't do anything related with merger acquisition, mainly lending business. Lending including corporate lendings, uh, mortgage lendings, etc., etc., like normal banks. They're not crashed with. Okay. Do we allow <laughs> <laughs> They're not what? They're not crazy. investment banks. They're not this kind of a. Uh, you know, <laughs> whole license bank. Okay? Yeah. Major for them is the lending business. Okay? And most of those commercial banks only take deposit, local deposit. Okay? That's this kind of typical banks in our mind, right? These banks, also today, the data I'm using, is naturalized banks. They can lending everywhere, like commercial banks. But only difference, only difference is the liability side of the banks. They cannot take deposit. The purely use of bond financing, okay? Then I know all the lending, all the loan level data from these banks. Every single loan. Today I focus on corporate loans. Lending to company, rather than lending to government, or rather lending to hospital. So it's very different in terms of uh, the literature we talk about in the US. So mainly focus on mortgage, okay? So that is a very different uh, institutional background. And I want to talk more with uh, Google about the state ownership. Because in the end of the day, we're going to use economic evidence to show policy banks sometimes have to follow, they must follow market disciplines to deal with the risk. That is the first part I want to, in the end, I'm going to show the evidence for that. Okay? So that's something I would like to. Thank you. With. Okay. Let me highlight main findings. <laughs> Number one, of course, farm financing matters. And uh, we do find out. When expansion of monetary policy, when monetary policy is like a huge reduce interest rate, policy rate, more liquidity in the market, okay, will reduce this bank's loan rate, borrowing cost, okay, and uh, spread the bank lending because it's very important not only look at single loans, you have compared the policy rate because spread same maturity apple to apples. Okay, let me repeat again. Once monetary policy is expansions and it's loan level data from this bank, national wise banks. I do find out they reduce loan rate with the lending rate to the company on average, also the spread of the bank lending. Number two, besides the lending rate, the, the borrowing cost, they also will expansion the money policy. Okay, like a PBOC, central bank, relax, uh, reduce interest rate or liquidity, uh, increase liquidity in the market. They're going to increase loan volume and increase also increase the loan qualities okay so i'm going to explain the loan quality measure or the internal measures so all actually uh, sessions so i think that here is typo here let me explain to you uh, i just found like one type of so increase uh, loan rate and uh, reduce loan volume uh, 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 sorry increase loan volume and increase loan quality is right so let me repeat again once once uh, you have uh, this kind of expansion of monetary policy so we're going to reduce loan rate, borrowing cost, and spread of loan bank lendings. And also, when expansion money policies increase loan volumes, and one thing I, I make a mistake here, it's typo here, and, redu uh, and reduce loan qualities. It's the opposite. Once money policy tightens, let me repeat again, when money policy is tightened, the loan officers is going to have a higher level, higher disciplines to increase loan volumes. Oh, sorry, loan quality. Let me, last point, let me repeat again, it's a typo here. It should be decre uh, decreased because expansion of monetary policy is decreased low, low quality. Once, think about it, massive liquidity in the market. Okay, relax, the borrowing, uh, relax interest rate. So loan quality is declined. Okay, I hope my, my, my explanation is correct, my typos here. Okay, so which opposite, once monetary policy is a tighten, loan rate increase, spread increase. Loan volume decrease, loan quality increase. Okay, good. Second part, I want to really highlight recent research about outcome journal publication. We not only look at average result, we not only look at baseline. More importantly, we, when you think about heterogeneities, different heterogeneity result is what? It's at least a lot. Let me explain to you one to one. Huh? Number one, cross time shocks. Okay. The stronger transmission when construction money policy period, and also in China we have some market reform period. I'm going to show you if government allow, uh, push also bank play as a 
no more banks, more market driven, market disciplines, the results stronger. Then I'm going to show you reversal of a reversal. The policy change back to normal, back to previous, uh, you know, <coughs> more policy, government policy, so transmission decline. Okay? Secondly, we'll look at uh, cross industry. Very interesting, you look at money policy. I don't know whether Google and uh, Nathan and uh, Sergio teach you guys. So, money policy transmissions have different kind of impact across the sectors. The stronger for manufacturing than service. Why manufacturing, you know, working capital, relying on more, it relate to the service, more rely, relying on intangible capital, customer capital. But the results are more stronger for manufacturing sector rather than the service sector in terms of money policy transmissions. Maybe some of the smart uh, PhD students write a model for that, but uh, so far we only found the empirical evidence. Certainly, which is also very important, we found that this landing is a lot of regional variation. Number one regional variation, stronger in an area with a poor GDP per capita, so called low economic development. Weaker financial capacities, okay, more default case, okay, and a smaller Bank concentration. Why? Think about a bank. I'm more market disciplined. How to price the risk? Okay. Once I'm, I'm a loan officer, I look at the a region. It's a poor area. GDP per capita is lower. It's not rich area. It's not coast area in China. Later I'll show the map. Then uh, the lot of physical deficit, like it sorry, like Italy versus Germany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the market, you know, in terms of a physical deficit, the lending. If a, if a real market driven debt banks for loan rate, they have to be more cautious. They increase loan rate in terms of uh, risk premiums in, to avoid default risk. Okay? Certainly, we use a, we use a very nice uh, text analysis. We look at all the Chinese default cases by lawsuit. We calculate every city. I know how many cases default, why default. So <laughs> we have a default map for China. <laughs> So which region is a major default? We do find out money policy transmissions more stronger uh, in uh, regions have a more default case. Okay? Finally, bank concentration, how, how much bank branch per, per capita, per population, means bank competitions. So bottom line, we want to show look, money policy transmissions, loan levels from bank landings, is even policy bank, the care about risk. Okay? The price is kind of a we, we call the credit risk into the lending decisions. Okay? And finally, I think also very interesting, look at since have a long level data, we know every single loan to every single cities, to every single sectors, and to every single firms. I do find out uh, those results smaller for the firms have a less default risk. Okay, they don't, they don't price the default risk into the lending. If a firm with less default risk, it's better. Secondly, also we want to see the bargaining power. In finance recently, sorry, I switched to the finance, uh, uh, to e econ to finance. Uh, uh, nowadays, in finance literature, we really care about customer capitals, relationship, lendings, okay? If a firm have a stronger bargaining power, more relationship with the banks, with the lenders, so smaller in terms of transmissions, and the large firm, of course, the size matters. More importantly, if you read my paper with Google and Marco Pagano, Local governments. Local government provide implicit guarantees. So why I talk all the kind of genetic cross firm, cross region, cross time, cross sector? More, more, one key message is a policy bank, even if they make lending decisions, they have to price risk. Risk coming from regions, coming from sectors, coming from the firms. Okay? That's the key uh, message we're going to deliver. Okay? Any questions so far? Good. Second one. I have a question. Yes, sure. So when you, so you remember what um, what Lucrezia said on Friday that Volcker had said that uh, monetary tightening was effective through defaults. So did you check if there are symmetries that the, the monetary policy channel through you know this link with default is different when in tightening versus yes, loosening? Yes, I do. I do. I do. Okay. I do. Because, you know, this one is uh, like, I'm going to show exactly what's the tightening or expansions. Okay. Okay? That's the same sheet. Perfect. You're so I'm going to start. Good. Any questions? 
I think they use low level data, micro data, level data will go identify macro issue rather than I'm going to show some VAR, but it's not a major result. We're going to show how monetary policy uh, shocks, how to in fact bank lending from one major national banks. Okay, every single loan decisions. Okay, in terms of uh, to show the effect. Okay, this first part in terms of financing part. Since I'm back to actually we 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 have uh, we have a flag trying to look at the equalities. Okay, development. So I saw some of my. That's why those two people, two professors called Pictet. In finance development, so I'm going to talk about development. I was, <laughs> I was patient. That's right. So number one, uh, we found out the so expansion of money policy could reduce income inequality. Could I use could? Uh, no causalities. Okay. And secondly, this effect mainly driven by workers' wage rather than bonus. So I have very detailed information about the so whole portfolio of uh, every workers within firms. Okay. And evident, we come here from a lot of results. About city levels, and we're coming from the between firm and within firms, and also we have a we emphasize heterogeneities and evidence for regional variations, development uh, like GDP per capita, physical capacities, and the bank concentrations, and the labor intensities, and financial constraint sectors. However, uh, so also we, we use a robust check, we use the awesome money policy shocks or bank finance costs. I'm going to use treasury, corporate bonds different kind of uh, deposit rate as a shock to measure money policy as a robust check. But more importantly, I want to say, look, so a few things I really like is the increase in loan volume or decrease loan rate for this bank to that city, to that sectors. If a bank lend more to A cities, to A sectors, to reduce inequality, not only city level, but more importantly, between firms and within firms. A lot of heterogeneity, but find a lot of, I'm going to show a lot of heterogeneity, but very important, recent, a really interesting firm to firm relationship, so called production network. So, what's the result? I'm going to show if you, uh, is this bank lend more to upstreams, okay? They're going to transfer to downstream workers' inequalities, wage. That's something that really strikes me. So, Richard Bowen, oh, sorry, Professor Richard Bowen is not here. But I, I highly recommend that everybody should think about production network. Stronger spillover effect through supply chain, global supply chain. Okay? Downstream to upstream, upstream to downstream, okay, through the improper table, through the firm to firm relationship. So not talk about trading now. So, but again, so we do find out the results through the production network. Okay? And uh, contributions, let me yeah. any questions so far about second part? Second part, I want to say, look, if a bank lending more, because I know every single loan look allocations or standing and flows. To every cities in China, every regions, every sectors, I use this kind of uh, exposure as a as a variation cross city variation cross sector variations. I look at money policy titans, money policy change, impact to the income growth of a work levels between firm inequality. I we seen from inequality. I don't know whether in your labor cost whether teach this kind of a uh, new research. We mainly not only look at the inequality cross firms. Also within firms. Okay, this is also the few top finance literature or econ literature try to argue. So more important is reduce within firm inequalities, okay, by different tasks. So that's something we want to highlight connect to the recent debate in frontier research. Okay? So those are the main part of our second part in terms of maybe I divide so today's so in by practice we're going to divide two papers, but for today's presentation. Because we have some people from international economic finance, some people from the trade development. So I want to put it together to, to, to be tested whether after one year and a half quarantines, my mind still works. Yeah. Good. So contribution, number one, money policy measures. So we use such as money policy indicators conducted by the PBOC, two PBOC uh, money policy division colleagues, and Kai Ji Chen and AER papers. About Chinese money policy. So we use uh, not only the quality, also, also different kind of measure of uh, lending facility. Okay? So, so the same data set I share with Elena, they have a recent paper, they found out. So now our index of our money policy is a very similar at the Fed fund rate as uh, Elena used uh, in her global footprint paper, money policy. Exactly the same. They say, look, 
99% in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, transmission. Very good data, so they cite in our, in, our, in our papers. Secondly, very important, we not only look at money policy per se, also look at money policy shocks. So let me start to show, rather than the policy, money policy indicator conduct by PBOC Central Bank, also I'm going to share some market uh, uh, perspective of money policy. Then I'll talk about money policy shocks. Okay? So in recent AEI paper, as mentioned, Taiji Chen paper, we not only look at the policy rate, okay? In US, you're facing zero low bar. In Europe, we're facing so-called net interest rate, okay? So we not only look at the policy rate, we also use a seven-day market, financial market approach. We look at a seven-day reverse repo rate and reverse repo, okay? 30 day shuffle, Shanghai interbank lending rate, bank to bank. Okay? Certainly, we use endogenous M2, M2 growth. And just uh, Friday, we talk about the different in terms of M2 growth, M3 growth. Because a lot of countries stop produce the data for M2, M3. M3 in some time seasons. I don't want to name the countries, but uh, we also try to use for Chinese money policy. We're not, we, we are not only look at the the so lending rate, interbank rate, all these kind of rate I'm going to mention. Also very important, the so measure of M2 growth, the so measure of total social finance through which kind of channels. Okay, that is very different. Like uh, some country only look at the inflation target, some country look at the uh, total liquidities. So in China, they look at both. Okay, so first some data set, time save data set, quality data, will come in PBOC, and also we do the robust check use uh, seven day repos, 30 day shuffles, and indulges M2 growth. Increase, repo increase, shuffle increase, policy increase, means tightens. M2 growth, okay, any measure of liquidity growth, means uh, credit increase, means uh, expansions. Okay, it's opposite, you will see the results opposite, okay? And also, uh, in, to the measure about money policy shocks, we use the first one approach, we use uh, this kind of reduced switch models, to deal with uh, money policy shocks, follow the, uh, the AI paper by Kenji Chen and, uh, and the Zhao And also, we use this kind of uh, Taylor, Taylor Rule approach. We're going to use, uh, follow Elan's uh, recent paper. We use, try to use this kind of total, total money policy indicator produced by Central Bank, uh, PBOC, Central Bank of China. So, policy shock, later I'll explain more detail in the measurement. But not, we not only look at the policy rate, money policy indica indicators, we also look at policy shock. Okay? So <coughs> main, I as also, we have a bunch of a measure about development income quality. I also put as a reference, you can check all the recent top publications. If I miss any, any top publication here, people here, please let me know, I can put in my reference. So number one, income quality measure, we have a between worker inequality, which is a general response for work with different initial wage, initial high wage compared to initial high, low wage, okay? How response for that, okay? In terms of wage growth patterns, okay? Secondly, between firm equalities, the kind of genetic response of the firm with different initial wage. Firm wage, usually we look at corporate finance, we only look at average wage. But different firms have different average wage, so called initial wage. Certainly, I think that also is one very important innovation for this paper. We we'll also look at within firm pay rent. Okay, by task. You ask, as a David author, they have a lot of this kind of research. Have a globalization have an impact in current in in uh, equalities by task space. So we also have within firm inequalities, we call uh, wage pay rents within firm. Finally, if people do urbans, we have a city levels, uh, wage inequality, we use log variance. Okay, later I'll show some evidence of log variance at the city levels to workers' incomes. So this is very heavy empirical based uh, papers, project. So we have a uh, innovation in terms of money policy indicated in China. Basically, this is a systematic survey and uh, estimate of money policy in China, plus money policy shock in China. Okay, they can show the time series, you can see the difference. Secondly, we also look at the things, we look at uh, the relationship between uh, bank lending and the income inequality. We have a different measure in terms of inequalities. Hopefully it's good for your future thesis, and uh, this is something we are very proud of. We got a systematic measure. We know every, we know Chinese inequality, we know Chinese money policy.
Then we're going to have a research design to test the effect. Okay. So due to time, let me explain to you the heterogeneities. We have city levels. Oh, we also have industry levels, and uh, we have a Chinese version of the Singalis Index. So we uh, innovated by Ugo. We you now we try to replicate this result with a lending to a form of more finite constraint, labor intensive. Also, in this paper, we want to highlight production network, upstream, downstream, from to, from relation, okay? And city level, GDP per capita, physical deficit, and more importantly, use the text analysis. We took all the Chinese law, also lawsuit, also case, forty million case. We calculate. We have a map about cross times which region have more default. Okay, so that's something also. Very labor intensive, but I think very useful to understand the so underlying financial development in the default. Okay, and bank presentation, we use bank branch. Every city, I know every single bank branch in China. Then we calculate every city. Well, you have more bank branch, which means bank competitions compared to other cities. Okay, and identification is very simple. Now, in front of your eyes is a bank balance sheet. As a side, landings today we're going to study. Landing means landing. Land to the firms, we talk about loan rate, borrowing cost, loan volumes. Okay? I'm going to use a shock to liabilities. <coughs> this bank only use bond financing. Okay? Any money policy shocks is a transfer to the financing for those banks, for bond financing for this bank. I'm going to use money policy shock through bond, uh, bond financing channels to identify the lendings, the variation coming from here. Cross times, then I'm going to look at the uh, on average, what happened to the landing rate? So these are all very simple identifications. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> uh, usually when I taught my class, uh, both English and Chinese, uh, to different students, no question, it's two reasons, only two, half, half. Is I uh, explain too well or explain too bad? Usually I come to another distribution. Too <laughs> well, too well. Okay, anyway, any questions? Well explained. Okay. Good. Okay, literature, as we do time, you know, there's a lot of literature to look at money policy transmissions. Mainly, we have BTK, all, all these kind of today's. We talk about uh, also financial literature, uh, literature about the recent financial market bank, bank rounds. You can see Bernanke contribute a lot. The BKK and the recent, my paper with LN, we talk about the international version of money policy shocks to the landing in Colombia. Uh, this paper, we try to study slightly different, okay? We use the low level data, and usually this data is very rare to have a long rate rather than long volume. Okay? And also we're trying to identify new channel money policy, so called bond financing. Think about recent uh, issues about uh, all the US bank bank rough. Because a lot of bank is deposit, but deposit is also it's not stable by distribution concentrations, right? You see the recent debate about uh, the U.S. bank ground, and and today I'm going to use uh, new channels called bond financing. Luckily, this paper is not it's, it's not like the Jose Pedro's millions of loan regressions. We try to highlight the channels, and we found out a bank only use bond financing. Okay, we're going to test that whether money policy transmission matters more. In the end of the day, if someone have a theory or model, think about what's different between bond financing or Deposit financing. What's benefit? What's cost? <coughs> it's a, a very new idea to help us to understand the recent issue <coughs> about the U.S. and European financial crisis. To be okay. Second part: finance and inequality. I only cite a few fin top finance journals, Miller's this paper uh, and a few courses. Uh, my classmate Elena Samosi and Page from UNC. And this paper is using employee and employer data to explore. So the real distribution effect of money policy shocks. Okay? So they, they, they change the effect, it's not the same. Okay? Poor people, low income people and high income people have different kind of response. Okay, that's why we want to contribute to, to lit recent literature. Okay? Okay, so any questions? I only have a one hour, 20 minutes left, no? You have 50 minutes left. Only 50? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I cannot see that. <laughs> time difference. Okay, it's good. This time difference. Okay, long level data, we have a, let's, let, let me explain to you. We, we have all the unique 
competition data about this bank, lending level data, from 2010 to 2018. Okay, roughly eight years. And we have all the projects and lendings and the matching the firms. More importantly, we know the approval date, loan volumes, loan maturities, loan rate, collateral, internal rating, and borrow information. Basically, I know everything about this lending to who and the loan terms. Okay, which allow me, once I run any regression for loan rate, I can use as a loan characteristic as a control, which is very important when you regression if we do this. Okay. Secondly, important, important data, we have uh, all the data. On, uh, unfortunately, this data survey started in 2015. We have a lack of data, but we have a few years overlap. Okay? We have detailed information, matching the former workers, and to which banks, and to which city, which sectors. And uh, we know the firm location, industry, all the financial statements, investment, profit, size, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Form to firm relationship, upstream, downstream. Okay? Then for work levels, we not only have a wage, we have a bonus. Incentive pay, if you look at John Lee's models, incentive pay, how people have different incentives pay, in the bonus, and personal information, gender, education, etc., etc. Okay? And also with the Chinese family panels study as a robust check, results very consistent. Okay? Oh, this is data. So then we're going to show some visualized uh, map in terms of distribution versus loans. I put out Left hand panel is 2010, right hand panel 2018. We look at the total loan outstanding over GDP. The darker means the more loan outstanding to GDP. Okay? Start of 2010, every year we know the variations, cross time variation, cross region variations, and then we also plot to the 2018. Okay? It's so a lot of change in terms of loan allocations. I'm going to show you guys this policy bank not only follow government policy to help with a poor area for development purpose, but also they do follow so market disciplines. That's why we look at loan spread. So, so these are the loan outstanding <laughs> of just that policy bank that you're studying? Yes. Because, I mean, I would assume that if your total loan, you have the coastal region would have a higher. Uh, yes. They are more financially developed, yes. right? Yes, yes. But a nice thing, I'm going to show the loan rate. That's why only look at loan, total loan is misleading. We look at loan rate. Loan rate is uh, finally the default risk price. I'm going to test whether the default risk, risk whether price and loan rate or not. So this bank is really targeting the western area, right? Less developed. Yes. But uh, again, even within the western area, there are a lot of variations. That's why I'm going to see this kind of uh, China's a big country, so a lot of variation there. Okay? The loan rate, we also have a cross time variation, average loan rate, loan spread, uh, cross times uh, from the the darker means a high loan rate, and then later you see a lot of variations. Okay? So, so yeah. Sorry, so it's one bank, but in terms of like share of the overall banking system, how large is it? Like? Ah, it's a very good question. So this is uh, uh, right in terms of asset, right after the big four banks. It's a very big national wise banks. Okay? And then uh, I'm looking at secondly, it's very important. If we argue the borrowing cost different, Let's see how variance, how cross time in terms of, uh, that's why I mentioned, in China, different kind of banking system, different banks. Look at the uh, blue dot, city commercial banks, like a local bank, like a uh, Canton, uh, what's the name? Geneva Canton banks, okay? Regional banks. We have a joint stock banks, like HBC banks with joint, joint ventures. We have a big four banks, okay, big national banks. Of uh, course, a plot, okay? They are one year deposit rate. You can see they really follow policy rate. Very flat, they change a little bit, okay? But in the top, if you look at these banks, in terms of bond financing, the variance a lot. Okay? So this chart, I just try to show the variance, variation in terms of funding cost for these banks compared to other commercial banks in China. Because the deposit rate is fixed and minister yeah, exactly. salary, right? Yes. While the other one is a market rate. Yeah, exactly. That's why I want to see use the money policy shock to see how liability funding costs change, what happened to lending decisions. Okay? Okay, good. So other variables, uh, as I just mentioned, we have a long rate, long spread, uh, long volumes, long maturities, long quantities. Bond financing of two measures. Number one, we have an issuer. Once issue 10 years government bond, I'm oh, sorry, 10 years this, uh, 
this bank bond was the year to maturity. Also, well, issue prices, okay? Both market initial issue prices, also market rates, okay, to see the variations. We also apply, we use other bond costs as a, as a robust chart to start from the most uh, safe, safe by safe, safeness means the uh, treasury, from the corporate bonds, whether the, the results still in the same direction or not, okay? So the first part is bond financing. Work wage, well, wage information or bonus, okay? For wage, I know every, yes. So is, is the bond finance of these banks 10 years or they're using more short term like the five? Most uh, long term. Really? Yeah, I saw the, mature, I have distribution for, for the, mature, uh, the, the maturities. The financing mainly rely on the long term bond. So that exposes them more to this risk as opposed to if they were financing themselves with, uh, let's say, five years like most banks. Uh, uh, if I if I if I check the current time, years. yeah, more than five years of majorities. Five yeah. to ten years is is majorities. Yeah, I mean, so is that something particular to these Chinese banks? Because banks I know, like in the in the West, I think they they if they're using any bond finance, it would be short term. Because Three, five years. No, I think you're, you're right. Exposure yeah. to uh, risk. market volatility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but because in China, you see the policy rate is very very stable. And also, commercial bank mainly if you look at the deposit rate, also follows very, very 99% follows the policy rate. Even have some variation here, even have a very small variations, but still, you see it's very very similar. But I want to highlight those banks mainly rely on. Also, this this was one year. I just give you same maturities. Yeah, the, but it's a ten-year bond, right? No, this one's a one-year bond. Oh, because uh, deposit most of deposit of the Chinese commercial banks mainly short terms. Yeah. That's why I, I, I compare apple to apples. I also use uh, bond, this bond in one year to see even one year. The data you showed, I mean, that's... So next one. So the, the other slide is, is, yes. is a 10-year bond. Yes, because if you look at distributions, mainly 5 to 10 years in terms of uh, this bond, real bond financing for these banks. That's why we use this measure. Of course, robust check, easily to check users, one year, and two years, three years, easily to check. But I want to highlight once it runs regression, we want to see as effect. If you look at, you have to look at the distribution for this bond uh, issue uh, maturities. Okay, and the work wage of control variable, as I mentioned, we have a GDP, population, fiscal standards. If a city has a lot of fiscal deficit, like Italy, Italy and Germany, so which which one have a more default risk? Okay, we have some measures. Firm level, firm revenue, profit. We have a long way, long maturities, and a long spread. Okay, so cross time, as I mentioned. As Google mentioned, mm, money policy is asymmetry because we have dummy variable cross time. Look at the expansion of money policy or not. Okay, and also we have a market marketization reform or not. If you government asks you follow the market, what happens? Government says don't need to follow the market. We have a reversible reversal to confirm our result. Okay, then our default rate, our default case by GDP, bank concentration, etc. And industry levels, your weighted average firm level, capital intensity. And also industry financial constraint measure, innovated by Rajan Zinganis and re-innovated by Ugo and me and Mark Boganos. So Chinese version about external finance index, okay, as an industry level variations. Cost time, as I mentioned, we have a bank firm relationship. Okay? So the back in power. You big, you deal with big clients or big with the small media firms. You deal with a real company, you deal with local government investment vehicles. Which have uh, implicit guarantees. Okay, we try to see these some variations. So let me skip a statistic, uh, uh, some statistic. For identification, very straightforward. Long level regressions, we have uh, sing every single uh, long I, industry J, CTC, time T. Okay, long variables. Then we stand for a series of long outcome variables, such as long rate, volume, maturity, quantities. Why? Okay, for X side, Major measure for us is market policy minus one means market policy for the indicator and shock one month before. Okay, last month higher means tightens. Okay, and for control variable we have a series of long level controls, city level time variant controls, and we also have a granular fixed effect. We have a six C time industry fixed effect. We also have yet. I mean, we also have uh, as a robust chart. We have a city, city time industry, 
time here phase effect and form time here phase effect, which has absorb all the demand side of the story. Okay? And stand, uh, standard error class and form levels. So this is design is very for standard, common practice in our literature. Any question for for adaptations? So I'm going to see number one, look at multi policy shock happen to long landings. Uh, long level variables, landing decisions. We also look at the channel with the bound financing. The money policy has impact to the bound financing, so that channel will have impact to the long levels variables. Okay? Any other questions here? Okay. I think it's very straightforward. Good. And for work levels, so remember, second part, I might not have time to explain, but a very simple idea is, is money policy shocks, time, more important, time, Initial workers' wage. Okay, that's a your interaction term is very important. So look at the uh, money policy time initial workers' wage. Also, we look at the city most lending to that cities time initial workers' wage as a head of generalities interaction terms. So I work I J from C cities T time years money policy sharp measures city loan lock city level loan outstanding or weighted the loan rate to measures. Okay. And income, we look at ex ante. Income level for work for I, a city's initial years. We just see how wage increase patterns. Okay? Wage growth patterns. X, and um, control variable, a city level control variable, and also work fixed effect, and year dummy. Okay? That is also very straightforward. If you look at the finance and labor literature, we always uh, play these kind of identifications. And uh, let me show the result. Let me, I think I only have a. Why only five times three? How many minutes? Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, good. So let me try to show the finance side first. That was a real fact. Finance side is very straightforward. I look at uh, on average money policy shocks and bank landings, then robustness, and then we have more importantly, we have channel test, bond finance channels, other dynamics of the fact. Heterogeneities or already mentions. Okay. Number one, baseline is very straightforward. Okay. We want to regress as also controls, as I mentioned, also city time industry fixed effect. Last month's uh, money policy increase. Okay, go up means increase. It's going to have positive correlations with borrowing cost. Okay? And also positive significant positive with the loan spread. Okay? Money policy tightens. Think about Fed increased interest rate. Any bank, bank in the U.S., lending rate increase. Okay, that's the first uh, baseline we want to argue. Okay, secondly, as I mentioned, we have a more strict granular fixed effect. We do exactly the same, but we use a city time industry time year fixed effect. We use a firm time year fixed effect. Results still hold, which means more tight demand policy. Uh, this bank lending rate increase. Okay, borrowing cost increase on average. Okay, those price. Which is a, this follow now in a, a intuition? Yes. So you mentioned before that it's monthly frequency, but here it seems yearly, right? Sorry. So is, is it like yearly frequency or monthly frequency? This one is monthly, uh, monthly, monthly frequencies. It should be from uh, from time time fixed effect. Okay. Okay. Then uh, we also look at which is also when people ask me money policy in China, it's also important to measure measures. We have a different kind of measure. Number one. Reverse uh, repo, okay, seven days, interbank rate, 30 days, as a autonomous measure of monetary policy in China. We do find out, if you look at column one, column two, column three, column four, those uh, interest rate measures, okay, policy rate, uh, market rate measures in terms of uh, monetary policy tighten, rate increase, it tightens, okay, increase loan rate, borrowing cost increase, spread increase, okay. So we also look at M2 growth. M2 growth means uh, more expansion money policy. Okay? More liquidity in the market. We do find out loan rate decrease, loan spread decrease. Okay? So main uh, cost, yeah, yes. I, I might have missed it. How do you control for demand for loans? Ah, that's why you know, we do also firm level and uh, look, right here. We have uh, all the control at the City level time variable controls every city macro variables. We also have a, a, a city time industry fixed effect. We also have a city time industry time year fixed effect, time fixed effect, or the firm time fixed effect. Yeah. Time, 
If your variable is interest of interest is MP, which doesn't vary across firm, shouldn't it be the clustering just at, be at the time level? Uh, you mean you mean sir here, right? Yeah. So, but sir, we did it. we also did it in time level as well. Yes. Because that's the relevant. Yes, so the relevant in terms of variation coming from. Yes. Yes, you're very right. So we 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 do have a robust chart in terms of clusters at time level, amongst levels. Okay. So that is a we try to control as much as we do control for the demand side. And also, as I want to highlight a few other things, which is uh, and more important, it's not money policy per se, also money policy shocks. So first one, we follow the AER paper by uh, Zha Hao and Kai Chi Chen. We look at use a uh, regime switch model. We look at the, you know this kind of uh, endogenous M2 growth shocks. Okay, we get rid of uh, all the endogenous factor to see the research, to try to calculate. It's kind of, it's kind of uh, endogenous money policy shocks. Once uh, increase uh, in terms of uh, money policy shocks, which means surprise expansion money policy, long rate and long spread decline. Okay. Secondly, since we have in-house money policy indicators, we just follow Ellen Hayes' uh, recent paper. We use a Taylor residuals approach. Okay. We found out if you are more tightened, go up tightens. Long rate and long spread increase as a shock rather than money policy indicated per se. Okay, results still hold. Okay. And then we show some dynamics one month, two months, three months, five, six months, the plot coefficient. It's very interesting. The effect, the duration only three months. <laughs> so you roughly increase, you have tightens, now the long rate increase, then have a convergence. But to, you, get, you, you can mention about reverse to me, it's dynamic in the long rate. Okay? Also, long spread. Also, the same similar ideas of three months, you can see Chinese money policy could, uh, frequency. You know, I think three months is, uh, is a good way to, one quarter is a good way to, to, to think about it, uh, money policy. Also, we plot uh, the coefficient of a plot, uh, uh, plot, uh, a coefficient, we plot the coefficient across time, one month, two months, three months, six months, okay? In terms of dynamics. Uh, and that's just the effect of monetary policy on the on interest rates, not the effect of money deposit on the economy, which then takes... Uh, yes, yes, to, to lending rate, to yes, loan rate, yes, exactly. To the lending rate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Then, as, uh, as Hugo just mentions, what happened to the cross-time variation for money policy indicated in China? So this data shows is uh, in-house, we think the central bank of China, the plot, as they have indicated, measure money policy, I also use the red box, means uh, to up means tighten. Okay? We have three periods, during my research time, the money policy is tightened. We go to cross time dummy to show the result, whether the results are symmetry or not symmetry. Okay? We do find the results stronger for tightened period. Okay? That is the cross time indicator for, for money policy indicated in China. Okay? Then, uh, follow the idea, we will just uh, indicate. Okay? We not only look at the money policy index per se, we we'll also look at the uh, interaction term in terms of cross time dummy. Once uh, you're more tightened or more expansion money policy, period, and the result, okay? What has changed? We do find out more tightened, contractive, it's obviously that go up, okay? Uh, uh, expansions, and the uh, interaction is positive, which is understand the negative way is money policy tightened increase, more tightens, on average, policy rate increase, and strong, results stronger for tightened period, okay? This is called time variations. We also try to show, this is a new result I think I like a lot, which confirms government policy matters. So firstly, look at the blue dot, it's left. It's a money shock, it's a long rate, okay? So if you policy banks, a lot of policy follow government policy. If you look at the marketization period, long rate increase, which means they absorb a lot of default risk. Okay? Third one is the government say no, you back to the policy bank, do what do do whatever will follow to you ask you to do the so long rate decline. So that's why we can use this kind of cost time variation to look at marketization of those banks. Okay? And then the second part I think very important. Time end or, or I have a 30 minutes? Half an hour. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we look at the channels. <laughs> I'm so worried, you know. Swiss people, you yeah, guys are very writing complicated paper. Reading the time shouldn't be so difficult. <laughs> no, that's why you know after one year and a half, I want to 
return, submit my answer for exam or test, those, those you guys are going to going to ask me if whether I can still do research in China or not. I hope the answer is yes. Anyway, so now we passed the China. Previously, we used the cost time sharks, money policy sharks. Okay. Now we're gonna look at this bank borrowing cost. Okay. Go. We have a different measure. First measure is the bond issuer rate. Once issuer go up, means more borrowing cost. Liability type side, costly. Okay. Then we're gonna bond to year to maturities. Two measures. We we'll look at loan rate, column one, column loan spread, three or four are similar. Okay, similar exercise. We we'll, we instead money policy PT minus one. We use a bond financing cost. Okay, we have a issuer rate and a bond year to maturity. Both show if the issuer price up go up, so liability side is going to transfer to lending side into a loan rate and and a loan spread. Okay. And also, as I mentioned, we're going to use a robustness check. We use a treasury rate. Same time, same maturities. If government issue, central government issues a treasury, like a safe asset, benchmark rate. Okay? Whether they also pass through the loan rate or not? The answer is yes. Confirm now funding. We also use a corporate bond, bond rather, than, rather than this bank bond. Okay? Same maturities. Uh, the results still consistent with our major fundings. These two are the robust track, but more importantly, bond financing channel matters. Money policy titans, they transfer to bond financing. Then we also have deposit rate. Let me skip it to deposit rate. We have different deposit or different bank, results still hold. Okay? That's a robust track. Secondly, people say, look, you ask two things. Number one, cost time shock by central bank, money policy. Also, you talk about this bank. It, Bond financing, financing cost. Prove me the two things are correlated. Okay? Simple way to, to check is look at the cost time correlation. We, we study 10 years bond, bank, this bank bond back year to maturities and the money policy indicator I just mentioned from Central Bank. Because the correlation is more than 70%. On average, money policy titles, okay, this bond financing cost increase. Okay, money policy you know, construct, uh, expansions, the borrowing cost decline. That is cross time correlations. For, for, for serious research, we have to look at the VR, VAR. We're going to run the VAR. So this is VAR. So Ugo likes the VAR a lot. So. I don't like VAR. I teach them, but I don't like them. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, now, I don't, I don't teach Mafia, I like the VAR, but uh, let me show you something like the. Uh, I did. Uh, so we look at the left to right, we have five years bond, as Mason as just asked me, five years, seven years, uh, 10 years, all bond together. Once money policy tightens, we look at the bond issue rate, borrowing cost, okay? So this simple bar show the positive correlations, okay? No matter maturity, you, you, you name it, okay? Then uh, we look at the money policy indicator, to other loan variable, variables, number one, loan qualities. Once the money quality increase, okay, because it's a measure, internal measure, lower is better, okay? From zero to one, a zero to five, as one to five, okay? Once tighter money policy, loan office is more disciplined, more cautious, okay? That's loan quality is higher, okay? Once the money policy tightens, loan volumes decline, loan maturity increase. Okay. That is also a long variable in, a, in, a, in our, in, in our uh, RIDA exposures. We want to see, you know, whether now long rate reflect all long levels information or not. Results, yes. Yes. I'm wondering, uh, since you have, you have uh, the like, loan level data, correct? Yeah. Uh, do you consider like, looking at rationing? Sorry? Do you look at credit rationing? Uh, in, in which sense? That, uh, you know, that when you have lower rates, Banks might be uh, reluctant to risk, like lend to uh, risky firms. Yeah, I'm going to show okay. some heterogeneity of firm levels. Okay. But default risk, everything you you name, size. Okay. There were there were one paper by my former professor Alexandra. He said, look, how many measure about financial constraint about risk, size, age? You know, you're going to see that. Okay. Good. Then the industry. So let me skip it. Industry. 
uh, the key point that we, we have a sub-sample, we have manufacturing surveys, infrastructure, also renew, uh, like a renovation for the new town, old towns, okay? They're all kind of landing rate. So results consistent in terms of uh, sector variations. From, exactly back to your question, firm level heterogeneity. We not only look at money policy per se, we also interact or form power, back in power. If a firm have a more back in power than lenders, okay? Think about the uh, Migo virus, uh, the tiny shop, okay, with the banks. So if you have more back in power, even you tighten money policy, money policy tightens, your loan rates relatively compared to a firm with have a low back in power, okay? The loan rate relatively smaller. Okay. We also interact with uh, small medium firms, okay? If a firm has small medium firm, small size, okay? The loan rate, money policy tightens, they increase. The bank price those risk into the loan rate, loan rate increase in terms of interaction terms. And finally, if you look at a, a company like a local government invest vehicle, so they look like a company, but they have a government government uh, implicit guarantees, the loan rate is lower. Okay? So that is a different measuring of firm level characteristic. From back in power to small medium firm or large firms or local government investment vehicles. Okay? If you government guarantees, these banks relatively the loan rate is different. Okay? Then we have a lot of regional variation. Let me highlight why I you know every same I interact deep deficit. If a city with a lot of deficit compared to another city have a low low deficit, the so bank price those risk, default risk into the loan rate, loan spread. Also, remember as a default case, if a scale by GDP or populations, if a city has a lot of default, okay, money policy tightens, I increase a price, again, a price is risk into my lending decisions. Okay? As well as bank concentration, a poor area, and more bank competi competitions, okay? The information is more, you know, more clear, and, uh, and you have a relative lower uh, more information asymmetry is of a lower anyway. Then uh, this is a regional variation, which is uh, that AER paper mainly focus on US mortgage market. Okay? Now today emphasize corporate lendings rather than fiscal mortgage lendings. Okay? So since I'm I only have a few minutes, I would really want to show some preliminary results to now develop colleagues, which is uh, the relationship between lendings and inequalities. Mm -hmm. Left hand panel, every dot represents Chinese uh, province. And uh, the exercise, left hand panels, the loan outstanding. If I see a lot of this bank loan, wide size, loan variance, see income qualities. More landings look like the income qualities is negative correlated, left hand panels. Okay? Right hand panel, I look at uh, this bank, land more, uh, landing rates higher. Okay? And loan variance of income, so city level inequalities. Borrowing cost is higher. For example, Geneva versus Zurich. If Zurich have a low lending borrowing cost, the inequality is negative, relatively smaller than Geneva. So what I want is this two a figure which I want to show the correlation between lendings, left hand and loan rate, loan outstanding. Right hand panel look at loan rate, borrowing cost. Looks like more finance, less more lendings, less inequality qualities in terms of city level correlations. Then we also put the regression result to choose correlation of all the controls. Money policy tightens on average, income quality increase. Okay? And loan rate is higher, inequality is, is higher. Okay? Loan spread is a similar idea. Loan outstanding, if more lending to left cities, on average, income quality is lower. Those are our correlations. Okay? Then I look at work level. Remember, I know every single worker. Okay? I've also measured since I've only have a few minutes. Of every single measure about between firm and within firm measure about income qualities. Okay, so I look at the money policy indicators. Okay, look at the work incomes, divide about wage income and bonus incomes. Okay, Titans, This is income. Uh, this uh, which is not wage. Uh, look at your wage uh, gross patterns. Okay. Sorry, is worker income labor plus non labor income? Yes, uh, mainly labor income, like wage income plus bonus income. Because I have every month wage 
and at the end of the year bonus. Some of the together become work income. I don't any I don't have any information of housing and financial wealth. Okay, so far only purely, purely the income coming from the company. Okay, so we do find that when when the price tightens, the income grows. Of course, the liquidity lasts. Too. Uh, your money tightens, your workers' wage grows, decline. Okay. The negative correlation, like you say, negative correlation. No, no causality, but net correlations. More important, I want to highlight one thing in this literature. We look at uh, pathogenalities. We interact with your initial wage. Okay? Even if money policy is tightens, who's the winner, who's the loser? Okay? Interaction does show once money policy tightens, <laughs> poor workers, initial wage is lower. Your wage growth decline relatively uh, slower than uh, slower than uh, initial high wage. Is the dependent variable wage growth or wage log wage? Log wage. So log it's wage. not growth. No, uh, log wage. Yes. Okay. Log wage. Okay. So that is the first question. Uh, we got answers. Then uh, we use a bond. Remember, we measure also the bond finance channels. Increase bond year to maturities. Income decline. The bond cost increase. Okay. Also interact with the uh, initial wage. Okay. Similar, year to maturity issue cost more costly, less high loan rate, low loan volumes, reduce a uh, slower wage growth pattern. Okay. And uh, we also a lot of robust check in the papers in terms of uh, loan outstanding, in terms of uh, we see from wage rankings due to time. You know, if you're interested, I can show the result after the presentation. I know everybody's busy, but more importantly, I want to show one thing. Also, I really like. Is uh, this result in terms of production network? So this result show. Can I just ask you a yes. question? Sure. Shouldn't you, in the previous uh, slide, but mm. also in this one, uh, <coughs> control also for the main effect of the ex ante income, or is this initial T minus uh, initial years? For example, my result, uh, my uh, firm level coming two thousand fifteen. I look at the end of two thousand fourteen. But is is so for instance going the previous, in the this previous one? previous, this one. Yeah. So the worker <coughs> the income is like lagged worker income or is like invariant across workers. Uh, this one is for example I'm a worker I yeah. my initial work uh, my initial ex ante wage. So it's just the first period. So yeah, for, uh, uh, zero. Zero. Okay, yes. so it doesn't vary across the board. So yes. it's absorbed by the worker fixed effect. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I think this is uh, what I learned from you. Yeah, 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 no, no, it's good. It's good. Okay, sorry. I, I, I thought it was it. lagged there. Okay. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Fine. <laughs> sorry. So, yes. Uh, related question. So here, if I understand correctly, it's the, the workers of the firms that are uh, being lent to by your bank, right? But in principle, yes. these same firms could have different sources of financing, right? Uh, good. So, for the worker level heterogeneity, I come into this bank, land to that, because I, I, so far I only look at the variation across the city, across the industry, okay? So you're right, a, a firm can have different funding source, okay? That's why uh, ideally you can have <coughs> other control in terms of whether they can borrow from other banks, from the capital market, etc. Et so far we didn't do that. But you're right, uh, we only use a variation, it's not too firm yet. We use a variation cross cities, cross sectors, not cross <coughs> uh, cross firm yet. Ideally, you have a you know, long bank firm. Oh, sorry, you have a long bank firm worker. This kind of metrics. But to this regression, we have a long sector city or cities to the workers. Okay, that is something we are we're going to explore in next step. Okay, so. The one thing I really want to highlight, this kind of upstreams. This is the result I really like. It. Why so important to look at this kind of uh, production network? work? This one is so-called lending through the production network, which means if I lend more to my upstreams, what will happen to my downstreams inequalities? Let me repeat again. Usually we do in the trade, we look at the production network, look at, oh, Earthquare in Japan, chip company, a uh, chips company got problems, what happened to the final prices, okay? Mm -hmm. This result, I look at, uh, if I'm lending more, this by lending more to, to upstream sectors, what happened to the downstream worker wage or income quality? 
I think also very interesting to look at the potential of Wessel transfers. Okay? So if I land more to upstream, downstream workers' wage, gross log wage, log, uh, log income, log wage, log bonus, okay? They increase. Positive spillover from upstream to downstream. So a lot of explanation. Trade credit, pay earnings, okay, a lot of discussion, but I want to first highlight this kind of a financing side. If we're landing to the upstreams, how to spill over the downstreams in terms of real effect, which we found out positive effect. Also, if you look at the interaction turn with a poor worker, if a worker initially is a low, low wage, okay? Low extent wage increase more. Let me repeat again this result has to show if you're landing more to upstreams, it's going to spill over effect to downstream workers' wage growth, especially for those poor wage income group, rather than high wage income group. Okay? Results very consistent and robust between firm within firm. Remember, I have within firm by rank variation as well. Okay? Results very robust this. Okay? Which is, I think is very interesting for us to think. You know, since we are development schools, how to promote how to deal with, promote the low income group, how to deal with the inequalities. Not on average, lending more to the, to the city, to the sector. All the thing about the channels, this channel to upstream, to downstream. Uh, then you, you immediately ask, what's happening downstream to upstream? Similar, but the uh, magnitude is different. Now, this slide shows, if I land to more downstreams, it's also have a positive spillover to upstream income growth, income inequalities especially for those low, initial low-wage workers, okay? Those are, I think, I, I need to think more in terms of which channel, but I think it's interesting to document this fact, okay? So finally, you know, let me conclude. I manage my time very wisely. So number one, you guys know the time better than me. So bond financing matter, channel matters, and especially money policy will reduce, could reduce, Loan rate spread the bank lending compared to policy rate. Number two, it's a lot of conditionalities. Cross time, stronger transmission for tighten money policy period. Remember international terms, tightens, and more stronger, and the marketization period. Government say, even your policy bank, you have a follow the market, immediately a loan rate increase. Then the reversal the government said, look, you go back to normal. Then no way, back to normal. Okay? Then uh, Cross industry, very strong for manufacturing compared to service. And for the firm, I think it's very important. Stronger for firms <clears throat> with more default risk. Remember, different measure of default risk. Backing power, size, small, medium firm or big firms. Okay, whether it's state owned or special investment vehicle, have a government in TPC guarantees. There's a lot of variation for that. Okay? And then finally, cross regions, stronger in a low economic development, so called. Poor area, okay? Weak fiscal capacities, those areas have a lot of deficit, okay? Of, you know, a lot of default cases in our regions. Okay, and some Chinese say a lot of lot, lack, a lot of default cases. <laughs> repeated, repeated default cases, okay? Concentrated cheatings area. If you look at my map, you will see some areas are famous for that, okay? Then higher, stronger, and smaller for bank concentrations. So this is the region. Secondly, we'll look at redistribution channels for money policy shocks. Okay, with micro evidence to use the employee input data to show the expansion of money policy. What reduce inequalities? Now we think about now, except China, all other major <coughs> central bank try to tighten money policy. But, they, yeah. yeah. I mean, to that point, I mean, in China you had cycles of uh, contraction and expansion, yes. right? Yes. So, you know, part of it is the timing of the regression, everything. But overall, I mean, so because monetary policy, I, I mean, you probably know better than me. Was no, not, you actually can't. Was, was, was not, no, but not of China. But uh, <laughs> but was not used primarily to. Of course, we have a mandate. Okay, monetary policy have a mandate: employment, uh, inflation target, uh, uh, long term, medium term inf uh, interest rate, financial stability. You name it. But, but I want to. Sorry? But is inequality part of the target? Uh, previous not. 
if, if you look at the... Okay, if so, yeah. so they were using this policy for other things, and I guess over the cycle of tightening and expanding, what happened to wage inequality in those firms you're looking at? I mean, that's because, you know, when they tighten, it works the other way. So uh, inequality increases. So they in decrease, increase, decrease. I mean, again, uh, and the question is, what happens over the integral of these things? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in some so, sense, is it neutral in the end, or is it... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very, very insightful comment, and uh, let me give back my two cents. Number one, I think we have to think about uh, this kind of a, uh, heterogeneity across different kind of a group, worker firms, in terms of when we make money to policy. Okay? Indeed, we have a mandate. Indeed, we have a chalama dilemma. Okay, chalama, sorry. But by practice, because of every single country we are facing elections, social unrestness, we need to think about unintended consequence in terms of monetary policy, in terms of so-called real effect, rather than inflation, rather than employment. We also have a social impact, so-called income inequality. This is my two cents. Okay. But these are, I mean, the politics is a cycle during elections. And you're going okay. back to the old cycle. So you expand, expand because you want to kind of keep things cool or whatever, depending on what your the central bank wants to do. But then you tighten afterwards. So the question is, like, in the long run, does it... Uh, Cuts on out? Uh, cancel out? Does it uh, increase in the quality in China? Increased overall? Decreased? Uh, I mean, I have no... I see your point. In this data set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, uh, because we so far we use micro data in terms of uh, importing import data to have a new measurement in qualities. Ideally, we have a longer time period, longer cross uh, business cycle to test. So what's, uh, what happens? Then ideally, we have a back to envelope calculations in terms of... But again, so very interesting if you look at overall income quality increase, decrease, and also look at the poverty decline. But in the past 20 years, poverty decline, no matter cycles. Inequality? Inequality at some period, some region, some sector indeed increase. And we want to understand whether money policy also plays some rule or not. Yeah. Because it's different in terms of uh, lending decisions, in terms of how, how, how financial market respond for money policy differently. Okay? So that's something we want to highlight. And we found out a uh, worker with a low initial wage benefit more from expansion money policy. I see this is very neutral. Yeah. And also, heterogeneity. We have a lot of discussion about labor intensity, a less urban area, and we, we found results both firms within firms. But let me finish, and then we'll go back to, to discussion. So, in, increase of a loan volume and or decrease of loan rate could also reduce inequalities. Okay? So, the rule of finance, too much finance, if you look at Google's uh, journal, international, uh, journal Economic Growth paper, was a John Lee. They don't have too much fun, sometimes it's not linear. Okay? So, now linear means you can look at the square terms. Say for me, if I run the city level regression, more landing, income quality, square. For example, all these studies. But I want to use micro data to show maybe firm response differently, bank response differently. Okay? And worker level regression also show low worker initial wage benefit, benefit more from the expansion money policy between firm within firms. And finally, which I like most, <coughs> is production network matters. So through the upstream downstreams, okay, you lend more to upstream and downstream can have a very significant spillover effect to do have this kind of unintended consequence in terms of real effect, so called income qualities. Okay? That's why GVC matter, global valuation matter, from the firm region matters. Okay? And uh, thank you. I have a question. Yes. Uh, other people have questions, so they go first. Ruben has a question. I yeah, so I was just wondering, so there's, there's a lot of emphasis on the paper uh, that, you know, the, the financing structure of the bank being bond financing. Yeah. So do, do you know what the results of this looks like for deposit funded uh, banks so mm -hmm. that we see, you know, whether this effect is just because of bond dynamics yeah, or because of the capital structure? So in terms of research design, Ideally, I can find a bank, commercial banks, nationwide, similar size, similar, everything the same, but mainly only solo rely on deposit funds, fundings. I try, but I cannot find that. Most of the banks nowadays, equities, deposits, Jose funding, including, you know, go to the uh, bank, uh, interbank market, also through the bond financing. But uh, so far, I haven't read Or any, even hybrid, because I mean... Yeah, uh, hybrid uh, is a big thing together. You can do CDOS, ABS, you know, in securization, you can do that, okay? The issue is, so far, I cannot find any single clean bank, only rely on deposit. 
if you, uh, you tell me which bank, I, I would love to see the result. So in China, we have a bank, a postal bank. So only rely on deposit, but not the change. But I don't have a lending side. But ideally, I can compare. If a bank <coughs> only rely on deposit funding, if a bank will rely on uh, uh, bond finance funding. But it will be great to see this kind of, uh, in theory, was different in terms of rule, uh, rule of risk, in terms of credit risk, in terms of uh, downside risk. So, so far, I haven't read any single paper to show. But even if it's, for example, one of the big falls, then you want to see what the effect looks like for the <coughs> one financing component of their That's their why financing. I don't have any, I don't have long level, <coughs> I don't have a micro level data, long level data for other banks. Ideally, I have this, you know, it would be great to compare. But so far, I also use uh, other foreign costs, such as treasury bills, treasury bonds, corporate bonds, Different kind of deposit rate. But see what? They didn't change. They don't have any variations okay? for us to test. So you can use CDs, right? You can use uh, you know, different, different kind of bank deposit rate, different maturity. However, it's not very every day. Think about deposit. They never varies every day, right? Then money policy shocks and money policy change might have less influence you know, in terms of variations to identify that channels. So this is my two cents. Thank you. It's great questions. Yes. Yeah, I have a bit of philosophical question. So if, if the monetary policy can influence uh, the, the inequality, then is that moral to have a monetary policy in the first place? Yeah, I don't know this. So I'm not a philosopher, but I, you know, I can answer <laughs> my, my two cents in terms of, uh, of uh, macroeconomics. We only look for monetary policy. She did monetary policy. We talk about the uh, mandate. Every central bank, if central bank have independence, Assume independent money policy, then you care about a few indicators. You have an inflation target. You have a you look at the employment rate. You look at the inflation expectations. You look at long-term interest rate. You look at financial stabilities. So that is a more you know traditional one. So some people also argue so called modern money policy theory. So I will I will quote what uh, what uh, what now a famous uh, economist from Harvard, but uh, uh, Mankiw mentioned. MMT, they were not moderns, they are not money, they are not theory. Okay, that's all my two cents as a footnote, as a feedback. But then he mentions MMT is not modern, it's not monetary policy, it's not theory. So if you, if you Google, you can find it. Okay, so I'm not a philosopher, but uh, we need uh, money policy. Also, a lot of inflation, a lot of issues. If you you can only rely on central bank monetary policy, a lot of structural issues. Labor market, think about in France and Europe, labor market. So that's why we need to think about not only one policy, we also look at the potential unintended consequent spill effect for this, those, uh, those, uh, those uh, money policy, uh, this macro policy uh, effect, or coordination. Think about UK, why that lady only have a less than half a year. If we should study economics with Google and Nathan and Cedric and I, on one hand, one grows, okay? On that hand, with the inflations, then boom. Then you have to the satisfy. Yes. So first, thank you for your passionate presentation. I'm very interested in your last finding about the spirit effects along the supply chain. And you just mentioned that uh, there's an asymmetry in the spillover effects. The spillover the, the spill from the upstream to the downstream is very different from the opposite direction. Yes. Uh, can we use, uh, you know, the variation in firms' dependence on account receivables? To That's why, yeah, very good. So, so the two GF paper recently use a French data to look at the uh, trade credit, whether trade credit matters, okay? Through so upstream to downstream. Also, through pay times. So regulation change. Okay, you ask them pay quickly. It's good enough. Yeah. So two GF papers try to answer that questions. And so far, I do find out... Uh, uh, this is asymmetry, but on average, the result. I want to, first I want to document the fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Production network matters. Okay. Then it depends on different sector. In that paper, it's tracking sectors, EC standards. You can look at that, and they do find out that we may not be good things because, you know, on one hand, you increase the uh, kind of a trade credit or receivables. On the other hand, you have to look at a net. Net means uh, you have to pay other firms. Yes. So a lot of. Uh, the very com concept, uh, complex in terms of production network, which I highly recommend it, and highly is not also in macro. We have a lot of uh, uh, 
what's his name? Uh, Isabella from from Isabella from from France. A bunch of uh, paper trying to use uh, macro level data. Uh, you, you study macro issue, use a granulate uh, flash network. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to Bocconi, Julia, of a QD paper about uh, this kind of uh, this kind of propagations through production network. So I highly recommend to, to think about this issue. Not only look at macro variables, deployment, productions, also look at uh, the finance. Okay, that's what I two cents to look about. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So you have this firm level data. What do you know about the firms that borrow? Okay, do you have uh, firm specific measures? I have a firm size, also financial st uh, financial variables like investment, employment, etc. So because so you, you you measure this that the false prevalence in a region matters, mm -hmm. but can't you measure some Z, uh, Z, Z score, Z score for the or some measure of financial strength? I have. Ex I have, I have. Uh -huh. Because that would give you, yes. so then you would notice if weaker, not just firms which are in weaker region, but weaker firms are hit more. I see. You have this kind of three dimension. Number one is a regional variations, especially for this firm, have a high credit risk. Okay? So far, I, I do solo. I do firm level Z score. Yeah. Okay? And the regions variation, what do your ideas do? Double. Just firm level Z score. I mean, you could interact uh -huh, uh -huh. the monetary policy yeah, with yeah, the firm yeah. level Cisco, score, right? Yes, I, I <laughs> have one result in terms of default risk, I use, use this score. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. I got a final question regarding uh, the, uh, the identification of monetary policy because I work on high frequency identification. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd like you to elaborate a bit on how to identify these sharks because uh, it feels to me that you remove the uh, predictive components from. Uh, the rate changes around some uh, policy announcements? Or ah, you mean announcement. Okay, Chinese uh, Central Bank always make an announcement over the weekend, night, midnight, <laughs> and uh, also holidays. So they don't have this kind of uh, frequency M MOC meetings. That's why we don't have this kind of announcement effect. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But uh, what we can do, indeed, if you check the, those Chinese, people who can read Chinese can, can check cost time. So always midnight, holiday, Sunday, and, um, and the holidays. <laughs> Yeah, market did open. So, if you look at Chinese money policy, three measures are important. Besides policy rate, repo seven days, Shanghai thirty days, Shanghai interbank lending rate, like a like like a London, you know, like LIBOR, like, like LIBOR. Yeah. But LIBOR is different. LIBOR is LIBOR is liar. You don't know LIBOR that don't work anymore. Yeah. You don't know this? Okay, good. You have to take a uh, decent class. Is that M two growth in terms of policy? You know, credit. Okay, then uh, more importantly, we use uh, the composition of sharks. This shark is very simple. First one, we're coming from uh, Zha Kao and Kai Ji Chen, a year paper about China shadow banking. They look, look at the endogenous, you know, they look at the regime switch models, get rid of uh, a lot of, uh, uh, they try to study this kind of M2 growth as a shark. For us, we initially have central bank money policy measures. Okay, this in house measures. Then we just tailor. Rule to get rid of this terrible residual as a shock. Ideally, as you say, look at announcement effect. Unfortunately, they don't have this high frequency announcement effect <coughs> in China. Okay, hopefully in the future, I can advise them to use high frequency announcement. But Lu Lucas Cudiz, think about Lucas Cudiz. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, since the data is from the policy bank, so is it possible that they are behavior of that's why you, know, you asked a very good question. At the beginning, I mentioned that I want to show this result. All the results I show, they, they very follow the market, right? Disciplines, you know, price change. But one thing is very interesting. So this is the policy rate, okay? This dot, blue dot, represent before reforms. It's the own average loan rate. No, government say, do not a policy to go, eat, uh, go west you know, to have the poor area, the, this own average monetary policy relationship with the loan rate. Okay? That period. This dot means, government said, you have to follow the market disciplines. Okay? <laughs> Less market talks. This is a coefficient about the relationship between monetary policy and uh, more titans, higher loan rate. This is reversal to reversal. Government said, ah, you did well enough. Go back to normal. As a policy bank. No market disciplines. So they go back. 
What I want to say, during my summer period, a major, I want to say, is this bank also follow market discipline in terms of price, market risk. For policy bank, very interesting, and I want to have a long debate with Google, is there are policy tools, lending to poor area, financial, uh, uh, financial inclusion, etc., etc. Yes, long rate, or long volume, sometimes to follow policy rate, policy guidance. However, as a market discipline banks, once the price individual loan lendings, they have to follow the look after all the default risk from the firms, sectors, and the regions. That's the only thing I want to I want to get back to you. But the, you know, nothing. We live in the second best world. On one hand, we need development those poor regions. Okay, so long volume, <coughs> long landing landing rate. As a, as a first of Google just mentioned. So most of uh, landing, we have a uh, specific regions, okay? However, if a loan rate is different. It's end of the finance, demand supply, any of that look at borrowing costs, so called loan rate, which is a, it reflect all the risk of lending. So that's something I want to very humbly mention for, I also call for, for discussion. Number one, What's different? What's the long-term, medium-term target for policy banks? Number two, what's different between deposit channels, if we only refer deposit, major deposit, or bond financing? Price and dark side. Deposit looks as stable. Good times. We can see more recent time. Okay? So that is something I think for this research, we want this research agenda. <laughs> I want to use the micro data to, to think about all these important economic questions. Income quality, monetary policy, and the financial market in, in terms of bank lendings, bank behaviors. Okay? So that's something I want to highlight. Any more questions? Uh, one quick inquiry. How do you define the upstream and downstream? Ah, very good. So if you look at the input optables, every sector, you have a linkage, right? Yeah, I know that. Then you can use a, a linkage with higher in terms of final goods uh -huh. compared to low in terms of material and this stuff. So you have a more than 254 mm. sectors. Yes. Then you can use, a, so far in this paper, in this version we use a dummy, but in the paper ideally use a coefficient as an as a, as a uh, exposure index, which is a Wuga that we use for our JF papers, okay? We can easily measure how, how exposure to less sectors. Okay? And so far we use a dummy, which is also follow Hong Rus JF paper. Okay? Import table. Okay, I know. Why not use the sector specific? Because instead of the upstream and downstream, because it is more friendly for policy implication. Yes, I ha we have a sector level variation. Okay. In the result, we see like capital intensive, like financial constraint, external financial. We have a bunch of uh, labor intensive, bunch of uh, industry level variation, but today, okay. in the paper we have, but today, okay. due to time, I, I don't want to bother you to see too much heterogeneity. Key takeaway, I think for the, also, my, my, my research, I want to highlight one thing so far, I, I did a lot of research, and I think more and more in terms of firm to firm relationship, so called production network, domestic, international, and the central, you know. anyway, so I have a lot of recent ongoing projects about <coughs> the uh, <coughs> default network. So I'm going to, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, it's fun, you know. When I lock down, I can study, uh, I can think about research and uh, try to wake up. I try to make myself happier. <laughs> Very good. Okay. I'll so, take an example from he that research makes him happy. <laughs> <laughs> very happy. Very good. Thank you, he. Thank you very much. And uh, looking back. forward, uh, yeah, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, good luck for your research. And at uh, the end of the day, Research make you happier. Now, Samuel, I can do a good end. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>